All right, so today I was riding my bike. I woke up this morning all, you know, miserable. I was having the same feeling that I was having last week. Not the same feeling, but, you know, I, was, I wasn't really happy this morning when I woke up. And, you know, I'm off work today, so, you know, it was always good. But So this morning I, went, I woke up, uh, had breakfast, uh, went to my mom's house, got my bike. Went on my bike ride. And what happened, what I saw on my bike ride, kind of made me happy, kind of, but made me wonder why it happened today when I wasn't feeling like myself again. So, about nine years ago, I was dating this girl for two years, and we both kind of mutually separated from each other. We had a bad, horrible breakup, and we, um, there was a lot of arguing, a lot of fighting when we broke up, and we just went away, never off each other and that was one of the places where I didn't care about the whole thing at the end of it because you know it's just the way I was treated and you know like her fan her friends didn't like me her family didn't like me and um it came to a point where I was like fuck it I'm done I can't deal with it no more so um like two years later after the whole breakup thing I saw her uh at <laughs> sorry saw her at the Montgomery shop right and I wasn't gonna talk to her because of what happened with the breakup and she came over and said hi to me it was like 14 2014 early 2015 I think around there. It was either before, it was like either a week before I went to Florida or a day or a week or a, or a couple weeks after I went, came back from Florida. And um, I saw her and she came up and said, Oh, hi, Mike, how are you? And the word that she said to me was, I'm sorry, but the way I treated you, I was wrong every way you were right about everything you you knew you knew how to make me feel good you knew how to make me happy and I am just really really sorry for how I treated you near the end and she told me this was back in 2015 2014 and she told me that you know she didn't feel right with everything that happened and she sorry that she let her family control her in the way that nothing worked out between her and I and me and so I told her I said you know what I'm cool with you you know we didn't we didn't end it the right way you know I felt bad that we didn't end it the right way but I was so mad at you for two years that I, I wasn't even gonna say hi to you today until you came up to me I was gonna avoid you as much as possible. You came up to me and you were, and you and you said hi to me. And you know, I respect you for it. And that was 2014, 2015. And I told her something that I never thought I would ever tell her. I said, listen, you know what? I want you to have a safe, healthy life. And I want you to enjoy everything that you do. Because I gave, I showed you a lot of things in the two years that we where we dated, and um, I hope you're able to use them. She said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm able to use them." You know, um, you know, you, you told me how to change. I told her how to change tires. I taught her how to check her oils and stuff like that. I taught her how to use a um, nail gun, how to use screws, how to use a saw. So, it was cool. 
So then today, I was bike riding around my shop, right? And I looked around. I see this girl, beautiful, gorgeous girl, come out of the um, the Dollar Tree, Dollar General, whatever the, hell, whatever the hell it is by my by my by my place, by my mom's place, well, by my place. So I live only live around the corner. From here. And um, I was like, I'm not gonna use her name. I'll call her Georgia Ann. You know, I'm not gonna put her name on this thing. I don't put any. You know, if I'm talking about any girl or anybody. Unless they, unless they give me permission to, I'm not gonna, I don't talk about anybody, I don't put anybody's name on here. You know, for legal reasons. So I see, so I seen this girl come out of, uh, I see this girl come out of, um, come out of the Dollar Tree. And I look, and I'm like, holy shit, is that her? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that Georgia Ann? And so I pull into the parking lot, and I stop, and I sit there. And I look, and I go, that's her. So, me being the nice guy I am, I was like, Georgian, Georgian, what's going on? How you doing? She's like, Mike? I was like, yeah. She's like, holy shit, where did you go? I was like, I moved to another place? She goes, no, dummy. You are half the man you are. And I looked at her and you know, I said, you know what? I told her, and I told her straight up, I said, I'm half the man I was. You know, I told her, I said, there's a lot of times where I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like I'm happy with the way I am. You know, I felt like I was happier when I was a bigger dude. I just told that I'm healthier. And I, and I did this, I did this for me, and I did this for a certain individual. And she goes, I know what you're talking about. You know, I did it for a, life, a longer life. And um, she goes, I know you're talking about, I heard about everything that happened to you, you know, and back in October, you know. I was like, how'd you find out? She said, oh, you know, one of, one of your buddies told me, you know, and I was like, really? He goes, yeah. He said, he was like, he was like, you wouldn't believe it. <clears throat> Mike, Mike was, he was like, you wouldn't believe it. Mike was being used for a couple months and this and that. And she asked me if that was true. And I told her, I said, listen. What happened between me and her, nobody will really know the real story. I told her that, that no matter how much she hates me and still hates me, and you know, no matter how many times he's called me retarded and you know, because he and I told her, I said, listen, her boyfriend fucking straight out just called me a retard. And I said, I showed, I showed her the messages. And she was like, really? She was, she was like, what the fuck kind of grown ass man called another dude a retard? I said, child, bro. I called it bro a lot too. Like, bro! But, uh, so. She's like, let me tell you something. I was like, yeah? She goes. You were probably one of the nicest, kindest, sweetest soul I've ever known. And I've still ever known. When, before we, before we were even a thing, and even, at, and even, even during our relationship, you would stop everything you were doing that day. You could have had tickets to a sporting event or something like that and you offered to give up going to said event 
because I needed your help, or I I was going through a crisis and I needed help, and I and I told you not to go. I told you to. I, sorry. And she said, I told you to go. Don't worry about me. And I and I begged and pleaded. I was like, No, I won't go. I'm not gonna go. And one event I missed. And you ended up getting really, really mad at me because I missed it. And she said, yeah, because you missed an event that you paid for. She said, I don't, she said, you have a life. Go live your life. Don't live, don't live your life through me. Live your life through you. I'm going to be here for you no matter what. Sports, sports will be here and go. I'm going to be here for you. And I said, you know what? I took that. But I took that and I ran with that. And she said, and she she was like, "You are probably the greatest person I've ever dated." She said, "We let one fight, and this is why I don't fight. This is why I don't argue. We I let one fight get between us and our relationship. And at that point." I was ready to, I was ready to, to, you know, rekindle the past, but I didn't think you wanted to. And I told her, I said, no, no, I said, you know what? I was mad at you for two years because of the way I, the way I felt like you overreacted during the whole fight. And she said, I, I did, re- over, I did overreact and I apologize for overreacting. I, and I told her, I said, listen. I want you to know that my past relationship and your relationship, I'm not putting them in order, but those were probably the two best relationships I've ever been in. And and she asked me, how come? I was like, because even though your parents and your friends didn't like me, they thought I was too stuck up, which I know when you're stuck up. She, she, she was like, no, 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 they didn't think you were stuck up. She just thought you had a, a swagger to you of that you were too good for me or you were too good or you were, you were too good of a person. I said, you know what? That's not a swagger. That's just how I am. You know, I walk, I walk in, I'll walk into anything, a bowling tournament. I said, I referee now. I'll walk into a football game that I'm refereeing and think I'm the best referee on this field. Because I know I am. It's just who I am. I have that swagger to me. Like, I'm the fucking man. And she said, I know, I know, I know. She, she always told me that she never had to worry about me cheating on her or smacking her out or whooping her ass or anything because she knew that I protect my women with, with all my heart and <clears throat> she she knew that but we had one big argument, and it was over something so dumb. But so she told me she's like, "Oh, I heard what happened to you," and um, she was, "I'm so sorry." You know, I, she goes, "I had no words of what to say." You know, everything that. Everything happens for a reason. She goes, I hope maybe one day, maybe one day, you know, you guys could possibly even just talk, just talk it out. And I told her, I said, do you know what made me feel better? That day, back in 2014, 2015, when we talked, it just, it just made me um, more at ease and more, more like, all right, you know, 
she's not the reason why the breakup happened. It was a, because I blamed you for the breakup. I didn't blame me for the breakup. I blamed you. And I told her, I said, I needed, I needed to talk to you in person to understand the breakup and why it happened. And I just thought that I would never see you again. So I just hated you for, for years. So we talked that until we talked that one great day back in January, December or January, before Florida or after Florida. She goes, it was after Florida. I go, how do you know? Because because we, we talked about the Jets. I was like, oh yeah, right. And how they beat my how they beat the Dolphins that year. I was like, you right, you right. But um, so. told me the same thing she's like you know what I wasn't I wasn't gonna give you closure you know you I thought you didn't deserve it until we met that one day and you were like and you looked at me and you were like when I when I said hey Mike how are you and then you looked at me and I walked over to you and I was like hey what's going on how are you today but um So after all in all, today, this morning, when I saw her, I gave her a big hug and I said, um, I wish, I wish we could have worked it out back in 2012, you know, maybe it could have been a little different. And I told her one thing that I, I told only one other girl. I bought you a ring. When I was when I was in Florida, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I went to Florida that year too. I think we broke up in May of 2012. We started dating in 20 May and like April of 2010, and we broke up in May of 2012. So two years of dating. And and I told her I said. I was in Florida that that January or December for a football game. I talked to my uncle, brother, my aunt, and I asked them. I asked them the question. You know, I said I got a question for you guys. How do I ask her old man for her hand in marriage? when they don't like me. And one thing, sorry, I plucked the gray hair. And the one thing that she told me was, do you love this girl? I said, yeah, I love this girl. And actually, I asked my aunt back in January, same question. <clears throat> or February, I'm sorry, when I was there for Daytona. I asked her the same question. And my aunt said, "You love this girl. You you sit you sit the parents down, and you tell them, Mister and Mrs. Not gonna give the last name. I love your daughter with all my heart. And they didn't like me because of where I, where I lived. They didn't like me because I lived in the town Newburgh. In Newburgh, it, it, they just knew it as Newburgh. They didn't know it's the town Newburgh." And it's so hard to tell people, like, listen, it's not the same place. Town Newburgh and the city of Newburgh are two totally different places, and nobody understands that. She said, sit them down, sit them down, and talk to them.